Welcome back to Kansas City, Kansas, where Titan Fighting Champion 24 is alive and are happening on Axis. We just saw another great contest at light heavyweight. We're going to move down in weights to see it. Awesome knockout artist Andrew Whitney about to take on Cody Gibson in the Bantams. Up to you, Tim Tialdo. Ladies and gentlemen, this next fight is brought to you by Seven Fight Gear. Our first fighter fighting out of the blue corner comes to us by way of Visalia, California. This is Cody the Renegade Gibson! The Renegade, Cody Gibson. He wrestled at Bakersfield College and Menlo College, was a two-time All-American. Trains in Jiu-Jitsu under former pro skater Tom Knox and Muay Thai with former WEC light heavyweight champion Doug Marshall. Coaches wrestling at Mount Whitney High School. How funny is that? He coaches at Mount Whitney and he's fighting a guy named Whitney. Eh. <laughs> and his BJJ coach is Clever Luciano. <laughs> and uh, Clever's a very good coach. Comes off a win last time out by a submission over Justin Santestevan. Back to back losses before that to Casey Olsen and Ulysses Gomez. Enjoys reading novels in his spare time. His favorite novel being The Post Office by Charles Bukowski. And he likes writing short stories. Says he wants to become a teacher when he's done fighting, a history teacher. And an extensive eight week camp in preparation as you'd need to fighting beast mode, Andrew Whitney. Working with Joe Soto, going back to the fundamentals of wrestling and also doing a lot of Muay Thai work. Cody Gibson is prepared. But Andrew Whitney, who has been training out of the Black Zillions in preparation for this one, looks like he has stepped up to another level altogether here tonight, which you'll see in just a moment when he comes out. Whitney, of course, producing arguably the knockout of 2011, a flying knee KO of Laramie Schaefer. His opponent coming to us out of the red corner from Boca Raton, Florida. This is Andrew Whitney. Okay. Lamborghini Mercy. Yo, chick, she's so thirsty. I'm in that two seat limbo with your. He says the game plan tonight is to turn on beast mode. Andrew Whitney, explosive stand up. Knees, hands, he's got it all. Let's have a listen to what Andrew Whitney's got to say. My goal is just to keep winning. Um, yeah, I'm eight and one as a pro. Uh, my goal is just to keep winning and stuff, and keep putting on good shows. You know, uh, I got two knockouts on Titan. Uh, I'm going in to knock this kid out too, or submit him. You know, either either which way it goes, I'm, I'm finishing the fight. I am a little curious about Whitney's stand-up this time. He says he's changed his stand-up in that he doesn't dance as much. He's going to be more in your face. Is that going to work to his advantage, or is he? trying to fix something that really isn't broken. The tail of the tape brought to you by Miller Lights. Six and three Gibson, eight and one Whitney. Whitney five years the older, three inches the shorter. Slight weight advantage goes the way of Gibson and also huge reach, some five inches going the way of Cody Gibson, who is bringing back the 1989 sweatband around his head. Let's go up to Tim Tialdo. Fighting out of the blue corner tonight, this gentleman comes to us with a record of six wins and three losses. He is 24 years old, fighting for elite MMA with the white trunks with black trim. This is Cody the Renegade Gibson. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, has a record of eight wins and only one loss. He is 29 years old. He is fighting for the Black Zillions. This is Andrew Whitney. gentlemen you got your instructions in back earlier do i have any questions from blue any questions from red all right i expect a good clean fight you ready final instructions we are set for three rounds of action andrew whitney always looking pumped always ready to turn on beast mode tanking on cody gibson titan fighting championships number 24 live on access tv michael chevello pat militich with you Use his reach here, Cody Gibson. 
stay on the outside, make uh, Whitney struggle to get inside. And when he does, when he overcommits, there's the takedown for the two-time All-American. Let's see if that works out, right? Indeed. If Whitney goes for the jumping knee, does he go for the curling overhand right? He's used both a great effect in the past. Already controlling center cage. High left round kick from Whitney. Gibson's got to be careful not to drift like he is at the moment into the power hand of Whitney. Jumping knee fell short and Gibson may capitalize here with a takedown. No. Gibson, nice job. Had that single ducked out of the way of the right hand from Whitney while he had the, the single leg. Good awareness on what's going on. Strong hips by Whitney here. Whitney, who comes into this one as a favorite of the bookmakers, minus 150, gives in a plus 120. Thanks to Nick Kalikas, bet on fighting.com. You know, Whitney wants to break off here if he can and try and land some strikes. Yeah, because this is the fight that Gibson wants early on. Make those punching muscles and Whitney wrestle, pummel, struggle for position constantly, wear out those punching muscles, and then later on, Gibson's got a better chance. Whitney is a tremendously strong little man. Ooh, nice knee to the inside thigh from Gibson. Dropping down, looking for the ankle here. Now back up on that double leg, Gibson. Got the hands locked again. Let's see if he can pull him out. And gets the takedown, ends up inside the guard of Whitney. We are on the ground for the first time. It took some 55 seconds. And Whitney did a great job of stuffing the initial takedown, but Gibson, being a smart wrestler, followed up with the trip as Whitney was escaping. My Mac is bad, some one minute and 55 seconds. Ooh, nice elbow there off his back from Whitney. Not the ideal place yet for Andrew Whitney. He's trying to push his win streak ahead to six in a row. See how Gibson's controlling inside on the arms of Whitney a lot. Passes to half guard, does Gibson. Has that underhook and under the head. Staying glued to it. Good positioning by Gibson. Looking to set up a pride to a Darce, but he's not able to do it. Whitney's pretty strong in there. Get off some strikes to the head here of Whitney. Whitney looking for a way back to his feet. Gibson saying you're not going anywhere at the moment. Hammerfist strike almost to the back of the head there. Under two minutes remains in the first round. Still inside a half guard here, Cody Gibson. Gibson doing a great job of displacing his length and hanging all over Whitney. Whitney not able to get anything going to come up. Chance to take that right leg out now for Gibson. Still inside half guard. Keeping Whitney on his back. Whitney making an attempt to get to his feet now. What are the options here for Andrew Whitney, Pat? Well, he's, he's dealing with a really good wrestler on top of him, so the wrestler's controlling the underhooks a lot and when he's not uh he's going for the darts and, and other setups so wherever whitney goes he's, he's kind of finding himself defending submission attempts you can see there gets him crying on the head looking for that uh, darts maybe going for a guillotine here eventually whitney single leg he wants top position and he'll get it now 50 seconds remaining in the first round nice takedown on the wrestler What submissions does Whitney have in his repertoire tonight? Uh, I think he just, yeah, needed to defend the takedown first, first off, though, right? Whitney now, chance to land some strikes. Can he curl that overhand right? There it is. He went for it, almost took out the ring lights in the process. And again, Andrew Whitney with the right hand. This is where Whitney wants to be. Good jab, though. Stiff to the top of the noggin and a front kick there from Gibson. Kind of lead right into that one. Switch up round kick from Whitney. Overhand right again, a leaping left hook. Nowhere near the target for Whitney. Having trouble getting on the inside at the moment. Gibson, I feel, is frustrating Whitney. Uppercut misses the target. Into the first round. Very nice round for Gibson. Fought a very smart, smart first round. 
tied up Whitney virtually the entire round. Gibson doing a good job. He's got that locked up. Whitney doing a good job of stripping the arms up. But then Gibson follows up with the trip. Nice awareness by Gibson, uh, seeing that his initial takedown was not going to work. 10-9 Gibson says Pat Milicic after one round. How are you scoring it, folks? Where are you watching live on Access TV? Let's go! And Andrew Whitney flip the switch and go to beast mode here on the second round. Been a very clever opening round from Cody Gibson, the underdog. Got yours in? Okay. Ready? Ready? Fight. Strange looking front kick, fighting in southpaw stance here is Gibson. Now he switches to orthodox, shoots out the jab, body shot on the left hook. Good combination from Gibson, showboating a little now. You don't want to do that against Andrew Whitney. Here comes Beast Mode! No, Gibson rallies back, toe to toe in the second round. Gibson tried looking for a takedown. Yeah, Gibson tried to step around the corner there and get that takedown. Whitney, very strong little, little powerful guy. Takedown! Boom, shakalaka. Nicely done as a cut over the eye too of Andrew Whitney now. He horsed Whitney up and powered out of the guard at the same time by lifting him up so that he wasn't in jeopardy for the guillotine when he landed. Lands in half guard nicely, next protected. Even though Whitney has a hold of his head, he's in no jeopardy. Cody Gibson is impressing all and sundry here at Memorial Hall. Raining down those right hands into the face of Whitney. Whitney forced to cover up. Gibson wants to open that cut. He wants to cause a money box. And Whitney trying to look for a way back to his feet. Here come those right hands again from Gibson. Mounts him. Boom, they came with the right hand. Is Whitney going to give his back up here? No, not yet. Inside half guard now Gibson. What a round so far for young Cody Gibson. Yeah, Gibson's just letting Whitney move in the positions, just adjusting, surfing on him, going to the mount, go back to half guard. I tell you what, having a good wrestler in half guard on your cross sides is as, as tiring as any position you're ever going to find in your life, trying to get out of those positions. Whitney needs to find a way back to his feet. Gibson. And obviously Gibson, not just a wrestler, Cleber, Cleber Luciano, a great Brazilian to get to black belt as a coach, has obviously taught him well. He, he understands these positions. Ooh, just drops the elbow to the jaw of Whitney. You hear the corner of Gibson saying, more elbows, little peppering right hand, still keeping Whitney down on his butt. Yeah, Whitney coming up to his butt. Gibson ripping him back to his back. Now Whitney trying to work back up. Nice look at the cut over the left eye there of Andrew Whitney. Almost halfway through this second of three. Gibson maybe trying to sit for a submission here. No, heads out from Whitney. Again, the corner of Gibson calling for the elbows. Gibson remaining very active. See how he took that leg from him and dumped it right back on his butt. Now Whitney's doing his best to come up, but he's got this... Power double half on it. Inside half guard. One and a half minutes raining. I should say one minute 45. But traffic is very hard for me to read. He's been looking for this setup, the entire fight for that, that dark setup. Man. Where does Whitney go from here, Pat? Well, every time he finds daylight, Gibson shuts it down on him. He gives him something, he starts to go that direction, and then just shuts it down and goes to something else. Uh, Gibson, I mean, Whitney needs to get an underhook and just simply get up. But like I said, he's dealing with a kid that knows how to wrestle, wrestled his whole life, two-time All-American. If he wants to, Gibson's going to control the underhooks and shut him down. Whitney glancing up the screens here in the arena to better gauge his position. Looking out of his elements at the moment is Andrew Whitney. Don't lace into that glove. You 
grab the glove, don't put your finger in it. But he's got to get up here, but he's having trouble posting with his leg. Forty seconds remaining in the second round. Been a all one-way traffic pretty much in this round for Cody Gibson. So what he's got to find a way back to his feet. Yeah, he needs to figure out how to transfer the weight away from his right side to his left side so he can post his leg to get up. He can't, now he's doing it there. Oh, Whitney taking more shots than an alcoholic. Here come the right hands again from Gibson. Whitney struggling to get back to his feet. Gibson keeps him down, drops the elbow to the ear. Puts him inside the guard, does Whitney. Pulling down on the back of the head, not allowing Gibson to posture up and work anymore. Ground and bound. All one-way traffic. All for Cody Gibson. He'll take this Fingers. second round easily. Stop. Some puffiness around that left eye and the cut over the eye on Andrew Whitney. Looking worse for wear here. We're looking very frustrated. Okay, in that round, Gibson feeling his uh, oats for a second there until Whitney started unleashing on him. Had Gibson in a little bit of trouble, but Gibson being the fighter he is, coming right back at him. Trying to step around on this takedown, wasn't quite able to do it, but locking the hands here, bringing him out. Look at how he rips him up, turns him sideways to end up not in the guard. Ends up in, in uh, half guard and neck safe and then starts in right away, unleashing bombs on the ground. Great positioning by Gibson. Look at how he's using his hips, keeping the pressure into it. That hard whizzer. And just keeping him stuck to the mat. 10-9, 2018, says Pat Milicic after Go, two. One round for Andrew Whitney. Last so round. It around. You ready? You ready? Fight. Here we go. Whitney needed one of those uh, highlight knockouts he's had in the past to pull this one off. He needs to find something and in a hurry. Got to get inside the reach here of Gibson. How's he going to do it? Overhand right, perhaps. Jumping knee, perhaps. Got to get inside that jab. He faked the right, went with a left uppercut. Didn't work, though. And Gibson talked about being aware of the setups of Whitney. I think he studied it pretty extensively. Ultra impressive so far. Gibson tries to curl the knee high. Shoots him for a single. Whitney lets the left hand go. There's another hooking punch. Uppercut. Hook from Whitney. Oh, wow! The whipping punch almost took out our boom camera. Overhand right there from Whitney. But he still can't find that big shot. Eats a knee. Takes the back standing. Does Gibson. Committing on those big punches. Opens you up for things like this. So he's just, he's got to defend this takedown and be able to get back to work. over the back here, Whitney. Got to watch out not to end up in the triangle there, Gibson. Inverted triangle. Whitney now looking for a submission. Gibson seeing it coming, trying to step across the opposite side of the body. Smart move by Gibson, protecting his neck well there. Single leg from Gibson. Now he's got him trapped down in the well. Let's see what happens. And Whitney find the finish. No, Gibson out of trouble. Did the right thing there. He was trapped in the well and just rotated out of it. Just kept going that direction and coming up on top. It's exactly the way you want to get out of that. Gibson right in front of his corner. Receiving a lot of instruction. And a great second round. Let's go with some of those left hands to the top of the noggin. He baited him to, to reach in there for that Granby roll and then trapped that arm for a second so he had three shots on that side of the head. Nice little setup. Gibson with the back of Whitney here. Two minutes 25 on the clock. Third and final round. Look how relaxed Gibson is. Knows the time is on his side. He may be able to slide if 
Whitney goes to his back here. He may be able to slide directly to the mound. Not able to turn over because of Gibson's control on that wrist. Oh, you pulled it back. Almost the mound here for Gibson. No, back inside half guard. And I think Gibson decided he didn't want it. He'd just hang out in half guard in control position. It's much, much easier to stay in half guard than it is mount. Especially when you get slippery later on in the fight. Referee saying punch, pass, or I'll stand you up. Chance to get back to his feet. No. Gibson keeps him on his back. Now at least Whitney's going for that underhook, but he's got to get moving here. Can't hang out there. you got to go. This would be considered an upset if Cody B Gibson beats Andrew Whitney here tonight. May very well be the subject of his next short story. Should have kept that. Nice, nice, nice job reversing position with it, but really should have tried to hold on to that because I don't know if he can hold Gibson here very easily. Andrew Whitney needs to dig deep. He needs to find something. Time is his enemy. 35 seconds on the clock. Looking for that choke. Whitney glancing towards his corner for instructions. See, Gibson did a good job of fishing his hand in there to defend the choke. There he is. He got it out of there. Let's see if Whitney goes for the arm and guillotine now. Ten seconds for Whitney to find something. Elbows. Body shot. Nothing working here against Gibson. One last attempt for Whitney. Oh, have a look at that after the bow. Gibson actually caught Whitney with a late strike, hey, and Whitney didn't like it, Cody. and struck a couple of times of his own. Oh. I know, stay there for me. All in the heat of the moment here, we go down to the judges. I do believe that Andrew Whitney will not win this one back. Nice little extracurricular turns away. <laughs> he went to apologize to the ref instead of Whitney. <laughs> it got popped a couple times. Tempers flaring. My mom, dad, family, friends, everybody had a lead. Love you guys. Be home tomorrow night. You get it, baby. Andrew Whitney. Oh, I'm yeah. impressed with his performance tonight. That beast mode that he hoped to turn on didn't really come for him. He found it hard to get on the inside of the reach of Gibson standing up. Oh, yeah. On the ground it was Gibson time and time again putting Whitney on his back. The underdog should tank it here. Tim Tiado is flanked by the Fighters, come lovely blondes, which means the decision is at hand. Up to you, Tim. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge Kevin Champion has scored this bout 29 to 28. Judge Henry Geary has scored the bout 29 to 27. And Judge Neil Fletcher scores the bout 30 to 27. Your winner by unanimous decision, out of the blue corner, Cody the Renegade Gibson. No doubt about it, Cody Gibson pulls off the upset, goes seven and three, Andrew Whitney, his streak has ended, he goes eight and two. Very impressive young man, Cody Gibson. That's it. 